Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Friends, Psalm 82 is a very brief psalm, but for me, it's one of the most interesting of all the psalms. Within the text itself, we find in the prefix that Asaph wrote this, and the occasion is not um, outlined in the prefix, so it's unknown. But the content within this was quoted by Jesus in the New Testament in John chapter 10. Specifically, he quoted these words, I have said you're gods. And then he said, if he called them gods to whom the word of God came, he went on to say, what do you have um, against me that I call myself the son of God? The psalm itself actually speaks of God, big G, and God's little g, and sons of the Most High. Jesus said, um, if the psalm said uh, that you're sons of the Most High, how can you argue with him saying he's the Son of God? So there's much, much, much more going on here. And uh, only eight verses. I'm going to dig a little deeper in this than I normally do, just because I think it's fascinating. So I'll give you some traditional interpretations of the meaning of these things when I when I finish the psalm, and I'll also um, give you my opinion as we go along. Psalm 82, a psalm of Asaph. God presides in the great assembly. He renders judgment among the gods. How long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the weak and the fatherless, Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. The gods know nothing. They understand nothing. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said you are gods. You are all sons of the Most High. But you will all die like mere mortals. You will fall like every other ruler. Rise up, O God, judge the earth, for all the nations are your inheritance. Now, some of the confusion that um, arises when you hear these words is that in English, the words are kind of blurry with meaning. And so I'm not going to go in depth uh, with Hebrew words. I'm not a Hebrew scholar, first and foremost. But I will point out some of the Hebrew words. And so in in verse 1, we read, God presides among the great assembly. He renders judgment among the gods. So we have the word God, singular, and then we have among the gods, plural. And in the NIV, the first one, God presides, that's capital G, and the second one is little g. So the first one is Elohim, the Hebrew word Elohim. And the second one is the Hebrew word Elohim. God presides among the great assembly of the Elohim. And so who are these Who are these Elohim? In traditional Judaism, there are a number of different um, uh, interpretations to this psalm. And I'll just mention a few. One, they believe that God is speaking to human judges, that he calls them gods because they've been given divine authority to operate under his heavenly authority. So this, as we go forward, he talks about um, them giving judgment to the fatherless and the needy and the weak and rescuing them and so forth. So that's one possible interpretation. Another traditional interpretation of this is that God is speaking to Israel and calling them gods because they received the word of God. And by receiving the word of God, they can now live forever if they obey what they have received. In other words, he's given them the rights to immortality by the Sinai covenant and um, speaking here. So I'm going to read verse one again, and then I'm going to plow through this, and then we'll we'll try to um, do a short exposition. God presides in the great assembly. He renders judgment among the gods. And then in the second verse, either the psalmist or Yahweh is asking a question of the lesser gods. He says, how long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? 
Now, of course, that's not being asked of our God, the Almighty. He does defend the righteous. He does not defend the unjust. He does not show partiality to the wicked. So this is being asked of some of these lesser gods. The psalmist goes on to give um, several definitive commands, and we assume these commands are being given to these lesser gods. Verse 3, defend the weak and the fatherless, uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed, rescue the weak and the needy, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. And then the psalmist, or the Lord himself, uh, then reflects on the incompetence of these gods. He says of them, verse 5, the gods, plural, know nothing. They understand nothing. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. And so then Jesus, in the New Testament, quotes from the next verse, verse 6. Verse 6 says, I said, you are gods. You're all sons of the Most High. In John's Gospel, chapter 10, Jesus is dealing with the religious leaders who were upset that he called himself the Son of God. Jesus responded with these words from Psalm 82, John 10, 34. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I have said you are gods? If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, what about the one whom the Father set apart as his very own and sent into the world? Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy because I said I am a son of God, or I am God's son? And so Jesus used this as a explanation for him using the expression, I'm God's son. He was using it broader than perhaps he normally intended it. But here he was saying of the Jewish people that they were gods and they were um, sons of God. Remember, the psalm said, you're all sons of the Most High. Continuing with Psalm 82, verse 7, speaks of them being called gods, and yet they're going to die like humans. Verse 7, but you will die like mere mortals. You will fall like every other ruler. And so these, um, these lesser gods are mortals in this context. They will uh, suffer from, from death. The final um, verse, verse 8, the Lord Yahweh commands the gods to rise up and judge the earth because the earth will be their inheritance. This is a fascinating verse, but let me read it. Rise up, O God, judge the earth, for all the nations are your inheritance. Now, you could say to yourself, friends, that this rise up, O God, is speaking to the one true God. But the one true God says in his words that the nations are mankind's inheritance. For example, Psalm 37, verse 9 says, Those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the earth. And, uh, and then verse 11 of Psalm 39, the meek shall inherit the earth. Of course, Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount doubled down on that and said, The meek shall inherit the earth. And so the, the psalmist says, The nations are your inheritance. Well, friends, the nations belong to the people of God. And so this could be a very confusing psalm. It's it's not to me. So the traditional opinions are either God is speaking to human judges because they operate under his divine authority. That's one. The second traditional opinion is God is speaking collectively to Israel, the Jewish people, and calling them gods because they have received the word of God and they now have the potential to live forever if they obey. A third theory, and this has become more in vogue in recent years, is that God is speaking to higher celestial beings. Remember the first verse speaks of God presiding of the great assembly. Some see in this the council of heaven. And so these celestial beings, although they're not the almighty, compared to human beings, they are considered as God, to put that little g in comparison to us, although they are subordinate to the one true God, to Yahweh. And so his um, commands of them to rise up and do right means that some of these beings are um, out of the will of God. We take this to mean the, the fallen angels and so forth. The fourth interpretation is that God is speaking to all redeemed Christians as gods because they become immortal when they receive Jesus, the eternal word of God. 
And so the expression, I have said you are gods and you're all children of the Most High. That is certainly true of Christians. So is it one of the four or is it all four? I believe that God could be speaking to human judges and calling them gods because they operate under his divine authority. I believe that God could be speaking to Israel and to refer to them in first century context where Jesus was as gods because they received the word of God. And as a result of that, if they obeyed, they could live forever. I believe it could also refer to these higher celestial beings or angels that the scriptures refer to frequently as standing in God's counsel. He calls them gods because um, they are created beings, but they're higher than human beings. And then it could certainly be the fourth one, God speaking to Christians as gods, because we become immortal through receiving Jesus Christ, the word of God. All four things can be correct. But Jesus gives us a key to the interpretation. He says in John 10, 35, if he calls them gods to whom the word of God came. And so I believe this is speaking specifically to men who received the word of God, um, both Old Covenant and New Covenant. The Old Covenant saints before the coming of Christ, as they were obedient to the Sinai Covenant, became gods with little g because they obeyed the word of God. He gave them the potential to enter into uh, eternity as sons of God. And then from a New Testament context, he called them gods who received Jesus, the word of God. Because of what Jesus did, we are the Elohim or the gods, little, little g on bended knee, that are to arise and judge properly. That's my opinion. Because we shall inherit the earth. More importantly, in my opinion, Jesus tells us that this psalm is written to men, about men standing in the congregation of the mighty or the council of the Lord, along with his angels and other celestial beings. I believe that redeemed men and women, our destiny is to stand in this council. And so, in my opinion, those who receive salvation through the word of God, that is the person of Jesus Christ, can be granted the authority to stand in the congregation that is presided over by Almighty God. In time, we'll know whether I'm correct or not, but that's my opinion, and uh, hope you enjoyed the psalm. But whatever the case, Lord, we ask that these gods you speak of would arise and do correctly. Lord, that they would arise and defend the weak, they would arise and defend the fatherless, that they would arise and uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Lord, let your gods rescue the weak and needy. Let them deliver them from the hands of the wicked. Lord, we thank you that you have called us sons of the Most High, according to the psalmist and according to the words of Jesus. Lord, in due season, we believe that we will see this all filtered out and explained in time. But for now, Lord, we thank you that you have said in your word repeatedly that those who serve you shall inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth, and those who wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. Let us be found among them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.